Welcome back to Collecting Cars. Now today, I have a unique opportunity to get behind the scenes at Morgan Motor Cars. Now while most of us have been stuck at home behind our screens, many industries like Morgan have been adapting to the guidelines and pushing on and keeping the production line running. I'm joined virtually today by Jonathan Wells, who's the head of design at Morgan Motor Cars. And Jonathan's giving us a backstage pass to check out just some of the things that they've been up to during lockdown, and all from the comfort of our own homes. John, thank you first and foremost for taking the time uh, to be with us today. Um, and tell me first of all, whereabouts you are and then where we're going to go on this little tour. Hello, James. Thanks for joining us. Um, we are stood at Pickersley Road, the sort of infamous Morgan factory works site. Um, and at the moment, I'm actually stood in one of the oldest buildings on the site. This was, um, this was actually where Henry Morgan first moved to in 1914. Um, this actual unit would have been where customers and clients came to collect their parts. Um, you can still see the original imprints in the floorboards where people would have queued to pick up their various bits and pieces but um, this is essentially where it all started so we're at the top of the Amazing. works in Malvern um, on Pickersley Road and today I thought we'd have a quick walk around up here um, maybe take a stroll through the production line as well and then uh, afterward perhaps look at behind the scenes where uh, where I live in the Morgan Design and Engineering Department. Yes we want to see all the goodies behind the scenes and see what you guys have been up to busy beavering away throughout lockdown. <laughs> um, but take, take us back then just, just to, to the beginnings of Morgan briefly um, and I know there's a number of cars behind you so we can sort of string along um, the story um, of Morgan. Where you're standing now presumably then is, is the home of the, of the three-wheeler. Um, yes definitely it is exactly that the home of the three-wheeler. So our founder, Henry Morgan, um, founded the company in 1909, as it were. Um, and it became, it came a very honest beginnings, really. He, um, he lived just over the Malvern Hills here, we see, we see from the top of the yard. Um, and he essentially wanted to create himself a vehicle that could take him to and from work down at the bottom of the hills um, on a limited means. So naturally, we ended up with a very lightweight, high power to weight vehicle that was by nature very simplistic. And that's sort of a philosophy yes. that stayed with us right through till today. You know, there's nothing on a Morgan that doesn't need to be there. They're naturally very lightweight as a result. Um, and the overall power to weight on all of our cars is, is very impressive. The first ever Morgan was a three-wheeler. Um, and the three-wheeler was really our sort of, you know, founding vehicle. Up until the, the sort of early 1930s, we built three-wheelers. Um, they did so well in sort of motorsport and competition. Um, I mean, famously, they used to start a lap behind the other cars in the pit lanes at some of the races at Brooklyn's just to give the four wheelers a chance. And I think that pedigree soon reached the attentions of the affluent and the Morgan brand started to become quite fashionable, particularly in Paris and in Europe. Um, and from there, the, the four wheeler evolved. So the first, the first and John, um, sorry. Was there, was there a reason in particular why uh, at its beginnings, it was a three wheeler. I mean, why, why was there a decision made not to have that, that additional wheel? Well, it was referred to, I guess, as a cycle car. Um, and fundamentally, hmm. it borrowed technologies from both motorcycles and cars. Um, very small yeah. compact engine, a single belt um, chain driven rear wheel, tubular chassis construction that was sort of flanking the, the gearbox and powertrain directly. And then the sort of bodywork hung off that. It was just a very simple way of putting a vehicle together, which gave you maximum performance benefit for, you know, the fewest possible parts. So um, yeah, fantastic. that was the origins, really. It was a sort of the cycle car at the time. And, and what, is, what have we got behind you, immediately behind you there? Well, interestingly, following the, the sort of the three-wheeler um, era, um, the first four-wheeler appeared. It was called the Morgan 4-4. Um, a rather an inventive naming strategy. It essentially represented the four cylinders and the four wheels on the car. And the 4.4 yeah. is a car that throughout its lifespan took on many different variants, a plus four being a sort of higher powered version. That sort of went on to be in the plus eight and we sort of started to capture those sort of naming, naming strategies of the, both the plus and the 4.4. The 4.4 is the longest running production vehicle in the world. Um, this here is a 2018 4.4, one of my personal favourite cars. It's, um, 
skinny tyres, steel ladder frame chassis, very simplistic in terms of its technology, naturally aspirated engine, 1.6, not loads of power, but also not loads of weight. Um, this car weighed about 800 kilograms, live axle on the back, parabolic suspension, uh, sliding pillar on the front. It was very flat for every bump in the road, but you really felt like you were engaging with the machine when you drove it. Um, phenomenal yeah. front, a real go-kart, drive it with your foot fully, fully in it if you like and um, it, was never, it never really scared you. Wouldn't go around a corner very well, but it was good fun trying. And um, this really kind of <laughs> represents everything that Morgan's about, really focused on a, a heightened driving experience, not necessarily being the quickest, yeah. but having the most fun doing it. Um, yes, but, but I mean, I think, I think when you're, you're, in a, you're in an open top small car, the sense of speed is, is much greater. You, you, you can have a lot of fun at low speeds on the on those english country exactly. roads can't you exactly and there's certain characteristics of this this sort of dna if you like that are relevant to all of our cars and actually shared by all of our cars so even on a even on a sort of three wheelie you have quite a lot of length in front of you and you're sat very much directly on the back wheel so you're kind of the seat of your pants is directly engaging with the rear the rear drive um, so any sensation of oversteer is really heightened and you really feel like you're sort of flying with the car big long view down the bonnet on a three-wheeler you can see the the separate wheel arches moving around and they really give you a confidence away of placing your front wheels in a corner and it's exactly the same with the running boards on a 4-4 skinny long bonnet you've got a view down all those louvers which gives you that amazing vista before you've even started and then you can see the top of the two yeah. wheel arches where the, the center line of this this curve is directly above the center line of the wheel so you've got amazing confidence with a morgan as to where you're placing the front of the car even though it feels like it's miles in front of you the drop doors on the side these enable you to have a really open experience um, on the sort of the aero range cars particularly the sort of series five and the later aeros we sort of had a high shoulder line which sat the occupant in the car and you still felt very open um, but with the drop doors on a classic morgan you feel you know you just open on every angle and you feel very much yeah, like you're having an outdoors experience you know um, and these, this sort yeah. of formula is, is, it just works very well for us. The running boards on the side, you know, they're, they're, they are the wheel arches. Um, the wooden frame that sits underneath these cars, we'll have a look at when we walk around the factory, but there's kind of a zero waste approach here. The, the wooden frame directly holds the leather on the inside of the car and creates the interior aesthetic. But it's also the former that the guys panel beat the handwork, handworked panels on top of. So you kind of have, um, you know, there's zero waste in this car. It's a very honest, pure sports car and 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 tell me sort of you know that that's that's quite a recent car but but how similar is that to the to the original f formula because we're going to talk a little bit about later on about kind of um the the, the bloodline of, of morgan and the heritage coming through but now of course you're integrating so much more technology in the car so how, how what, what are sort of similarities and what sort of comes through from the originals into into the car course, that we see behind of course you, i mean example? That's a, really, that's, a really good, that's a really good point to sort of talk about what else we've got up here at the start of the factory. This is kind of the, you know, the iconic traditional Morgan. Lots of values in this are apparent in all of our products. Um, but recently, the steel ladder frame chassis, which was in existence for you know, many, many a decade, that technology progressed forward quite significantly with the yeah. dawn of the CX generation Morgan sports car. But before we talk about those, this car here to my right hand side, there's a couple of things. First of all, <laughs> this is a car that introduced all aluminium body construction, introduced an aluminium chassis. Um, and this kind of was the pioneering halo car for us that managed much of the learning that's gone into now the core product, the new CX generation, sort of began with the cars in this family. So the Aero family yeah, of vehicles. That's right, this is the Aeromax, one of the most special um, vehicles that have resided within the Aero bloodline. The Aero itself was first introduced in 2000 um, and it introduced to Morgan Superform bodywork, for example, an aluminium bonded and riveted chassis, a modern powertrain from BMW. This car in 2008, um, this was a car that was actually entering production when I first joined the factory and it was incredibly exciting to see this born. Um, it was very much a special project. We just did a hundred of these cars. But every panel was superformed, wow. and superforming is essentially a, an aerospace technology where they're, they're super plastic forming large sheets of aluminium. It doesn't lend itself very well to mass manufacture because the tools are aluminium and they don't have a great lifespan and it's quite a complex process. But what it meant for us is mm. that we could achieve hugely complex surfaces 
without joining panels together and additional welding. So that entire front wing, for example, is one sheet of aluminium. Um, and due to the nature of the process, means that you get a very even surface thickness over the whole panel, unlike pressing, where you have to account for the deepest part of the drawer in the overall material thickness. Um, and that yeah. kind of sits perfectly with Morgan's principles, very elaborate shapes that are functional and dramatic with a very lightweight approach. Um, technology we use yeah, in all of our it's, cars. It's right? an incredibly, incredibly striking car, and obviously it makes, it makes a massive statement, but, the, but you know, most of all, the statement is showing such a step change in, in production and, and the ambition uh, for your cars. Oh, that's completely right. I think um, Morgan's got a, a big pot of ingredients, whether that's you know, over 100 years of history, whether that's our pedigree in motorsport, whether that's our handcrafted um, abilities or the materials we use, or just the dramatic proportions and shapes. There's a lot of different ingredients in the pot that we can use in different measures. Another really good example of that is, is just behind you and in front of me. Um, this car here is the Plus 4 Plus. So continuing that unusual naming strategy, we had the Plus 4, which was a, a higher powered 4.4. Yeah. This is the Plus 4 Plus. So yeah. it was a Plus 4 with that plus size body. So this was a car that was born in 1963. Um, but interestingly, only ever 26 of these were built. Um, there's several sort of theories as to why that was. Um, they weren't hugely popular cars, um, partly due to the price point. They were much higher the sort of price point than the competition. Um, they were fiberglass, and perhaps that wasn't fully in keeping with what Morgan customers were looking for at the time. Um, and also in terms of their styling, they're sort of a very, very pretty, almost 1950s design language, almost a little barquetta in the sort of body sides and things. And at the time in 1960s, it was neither a classic car nor a particularly modern car. Um, whereas nowadays we're sort of recognised for designing vehicles that have a very strong classical influence. So it could have perhaps been something to do with that. But um, nonetheless, standalone here we are today in 2021. It's, it's, a, it's a remarkably let's, pretty let's, car. Let's have, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the roof line because that's, that's actually, that, that looks quite unique, doesn't it? It's, um, <laughs> yeah, so this was this The was way that part. sweeps back, it's a, it's a really interesting design. It's, it, it, it's, it's beautiful, um, we love it. Certainly, we it certainly it. Looks, looks at a, a, clearly a period of time where um, you know, there's, a, there's a bit of experimentation going on and, and sort of te testing the market. For, for different things, but 100, 100%. it looks fabulous. We love how unapologetic this roof line is. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the fact, you know, it's to do with the tall hair pieces of the time um, and just allowing a little more comfort above the top in the sort of, in the mid sixties. Um, but no, we love how unapologetic this is. The long, the same sort of Morgan proportions are still there. You still have a, a long nose with a very short front overhang. You've got a long rear overhang. You're still sat directly on that rear axle. Um, it's a lovely view down the bonnet as you sat inside the car, especially with those tall windscreens. Very light and airy inside, even though it is a sort of fixed head. Um, so yeah, really interesting, really interesting kind of car for us, especially now looking back retrospectively um, and looking forward yes. at the, the flexibility of the Morgan brand of what else we could consider moving out of our sort of 1940s, Absolutely. 50s routings into a sort of a more of a mid-century routing, you know, this car represents a sort of a palette of inspirations we could look at and demonstrates just how varied the Morgan design models have been over the years. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fantastic because when you think of Morgan, um, obviously you, you think of their most iconic cars, which we all, we all know, you know, the, the shapes of, but um, that is something, you know, that particular shape is not something you, you immediately think of, uh, of Morgan when you, when you see it, um, but it looks, it looks magnificent. No, quite. It's, um, it's lovely to have it up here. This represents a, a small part of our heritage collection. A few more of them are actually bundled away down at our design centre, so we'll go and have a look at a few more of those later on. Um, there's definitely yeah, a couple definitely. more noteworthy ones here before we start walking around the factory. Um, this here is a 1938 drophead coupe, so this is a really good example of a very, very early 4.4 that started everything. The uh, flat radiator on the front and beautiful detailing and you know, some of these door shuts and closures are <laughs> almost, almost as good as they are nowadays. <laughs> so, um, this oh, is wow, yeah. absolutely beautiful car. Um, and this has got a full Cause documented Because that, that, that handmade ethos has, nev has never really left you, has it? You know, from, no. from the point of, of the car that you're showing me now um, to, to today, the, the craftsmanship has been something so intrinsically linked with how you build your cars. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's completely right. Fundamentally, 
um, CX cars are quite a large step forward from the sort of the, the sort of uh, late 2018-19 classic cars we see there. Um, but still, up until this point, you know, this still has a wooden frame, hand-shaped, still sits on top of a metal chassis. General weight distribution proportions are all very, very familiar. Um, yeah. And then here, this was, you know, the sort of the vehicle that bookended the, the three-wheeler. Um, we had the very first 1909 through to this one. The three-wheelers themselves took on many iterations. You see a sort of four-seater model behind me there. Um, this was a particularly fantastic car, really. This was a super sports three-wheeler. And this became the sort of inspirations for the, the outgoing three-wheeler at the moment. Um, uh, something I remember my colleague <laughs> and myself looking at a lot when we were doing the design development of the current three-wheeler. Um, so yeah, really special car. And, and so what sort, of, what sort of things did you look at then when, when you were looking at um, developing the, the three-wheeler that you've worked on? What did you take? What kind of inspirations did you take from, from that one there? Um, I mean, I was, I was fairly junior at the time, sitting alongside my, my predecessor who, was, you know, who led that programme. Um, and it was, brilliant to, it was brilliant to work with him on that programme. When, um, when my predecessor joined the company, he was the first trained visual designer that Morgan had ever employed. So, wow. so with yeah. that, he introduced new skills and techniques that hadn't really been seen by the company before, such as visualization yeah. or clay modeling and, and those sorts of bits and pieces. And my role really was to help translate what, what Matt was thinking about and, and give that to the engineering team and to the guys on the shop floor. So I brought with me the sort of skills to look at 3D surfacing and clay modeling and some of the modern design techniques that designers use to communicate their ideas and inspirations. And with that, things like Photoshop were introduced to the company and very quickly they realised that, you know, we could, we could colour in and we, we became part of the brochures and the website and the general brand identity. So despite Morgan's great yeah. age, we're actually entering this last decade has been a real exponential increase in terms of... Um, development and technology. When we were looking at the three-wheeler, the inspirations were very much our past, but you know, we were two young designers that were also very excited about what Morgan could be in the future. So whilst we acknowledge the yes. core things, the face of the car, its character, the overall proportions, we were also keen to deploy a few sort of more modern design techniques too, um, and, and technologies in terms of the way we develop the car. But um, often our inspirations aren't, you know, automotive. We'll look at Everything from interiors to, to watches to, um, to fashion, uh, to graphic design, colorways, um, textures, new materials, uh, motorcycles, aviation, whatever it is really that inspires us and excites us. Yeah, fantastic. Well, um, we'll continue that theme on because it'd be really, really interesting to talk to you about kind of uh, the marriage between craftsmanship and technology as we, as we go sort of further around. Great. Should we um, walk into the factory and have a look around? Yeah, let's do it. Take us through. This is, this is where it all starts. This is the chassis shop. Um, so essentially in here, it's where we build the rolling platform. This is something Morgan has often done. So the way we design and engineer our cars is essentially coach building. Um, and by that, we sort of have the coach work, but then we have the actual chassis platform. So behind us, you can see nothing but CX chassis. This is the latest evolution of Morgan platform built on the learning and development achieved during the Aero series that we saw at the top of the factory there. So all aluminium bonded and riveted tub. Um, and within that, we're containing all the powertrain, the electrical systems, the braking systems, the suspension. Um, and that is essentially a ready to roll vehicle. So all the structural um, work, the crash work is all achieved within that platform. And after this point, everything we do is purely for the for the aesthetics and aerodynamics, if you like. The body is a non-structural part of a Morgan car, um, which is really good for us, because that gives us the ability yeah. to Let's build new things on top of this platform. And you'll see after this shot why the craft that we do nowadays is so important to that, um, and how sort of disconnected the body and the chassis are intentionally. So without any penalty, on the overall weight of the vehicle, we've managed to deliver a chassis that's twice as stiff um, as the previous aluminium chassis we used to offer in the Aero. And much like that family, it still features BMW engines, whether that be an inline six engine, the B58 engine with an automatic gearbox, or an inline four engine, um, which is the uh, B48 engine in a manual or automatic configuration. Yeah. So all BMW powertrains, all BMW running gear, but our own design of um, chassis or tub, if you like, 
uh, and suspension systems and electronic systems on top of that. Oh, oh, and and how how and and why was was the chassis um, strengthened? You know, how how did, how did you go about making it sort of twice as strong? And, and and why was that? Was that was that because of the the new powertrains? Um, yes, definitely. We obviously need to consider a continual um, development cycle in terms of our powertrains and technology to make sure we're staying relevant to you know, impending emissions targets or safety targets and legislation. Um, and recognising the, the pace in which legislation is changing um, and, the, and the rate in which considerations towards emissions is changing, we needed to make sure that we had a, a new platform that future-proofed us for another decade of vehicles and technology. And the outgoing steel ladder frame chassis and powertrains we're using just wouldn't have taken us to that point. So the CX platform has enabled us to continue building our core product with the best ever, the lightest, the fastest. So John, where are, where are we now? Um, so now we're entering the, the wood shop or the mill. Um, and essentially once we've built the rolling chassis, um, that car can be started, calibrated to a degree, and there on after, everything we do is about the coach building element of Morgan Manufacturing. Yes. So this is kind of the most, the most integral part to Morgan Manufacturing, which is the, the infamous wood frame. And, and, and what is it, what is it John, about working, working with wood on the, on the cars, which, um, you know, Clearly, clearly has been such a big part of um, the heritage for, for Morgan. Have there, have there been times where you thought there might be a better material or, or have ever thought about deviating from that? Um, definitely. I mean, for us, the use of wood in the car is because it makes sense to use wood in the car. So it actually gives us a lot of very desirable qualities in, in, in motor manufacture. Mm. So as you know, we've got this rolling platform and beyond there, we need to create a form and a volume and a shape um, to hold our occupants, to, to express our brand language, um, but also to, to provide aerodynamics and, you know, encase all the rest of the vehicle. So essentially, the use of wood in our car is nothing we shy away from. Um, but similarly, it's not something we try and force um, in our design. We don't just use wood because we've always used wood. We don't particularly see it as a cliche internally that Morgan, you know, has a wooden frame. Quite often people might suggest it's got a wooden chassis, but that isn't now and never has been the case. Yes. Um, the wooden frame essentially is made from ash wood. Um, ash is a very fast growing uh, material, but it's also a very stable material. So we don't see the wood deforming or changing or swelling and taking on moisture. Um, and it lasts a great deal of time as a result. So we're able to get a good degree of tolerance in our manufacture. And one of the reasons we use wood is essentially we can design and craft the shape that we want um, to satisfy volumes, to satisfy demand, and it gives us a great deal of flexibility in manufacture. So, for example, we're not reliant on heavy tooling of complex B surfaces and substructures that we somehow need to amortise or justify with big production runs. We can quite quickly adjust what we're building to cater for demand and maintain a degree of agility in our manufacture. The wooden frame is essentially it's the tooling of the vehicle. We create the wooden frame and on top of that, the aluminium panels are directly hand worked into place. On the inside of the car, we hang our upholstery and our leather directly from the wood on the inside too. So that kind of has that zero waste approach to manufacture and gives us a flexibility to change shape and form very quickly and very easily. From a technical point of view, um, it's obviously very sustainable, that's a given, um, but it's got great NVH properties, which is noise, vibration and harshness which means that it's a natural absorber of, of those vibrations which can make a car feel poorly put together. And as a result, Morgans feel very solid and comfortable um, when you're with inside them. Yeah, that's, it. That's, that's really interesting. And is there, um, you know, at, at the moment you, 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 you continue to, to use those um, heritage processes. Um, is, is there a temptation to move away from that and would you, would you ever use sort of you know, um, you know, 3D printing or, or other other machines to sort of mill the wood rather than, rather than using those uh, historic processes. Yeah, def definitely. And what um, well, I think what I love most about Morgan is that there is no reluctance to embrace that technology. And when you see that technology coming online, 
um, it's really rewarding. It's great to see the, both the craft and the history living alongside with the modern design techniques and modern technology. So to give you a few examples of how that's in play, every Morgan now, as we see when we go to the design centre, lives in a digital world to start with. Mm. So 99% of the car exists first place as a digital model. We go through the same digital simulations, modelling analysis that any car company would undertake when designing and developing cars. We then use 3D rendered visualisations of what the cars will look like on the shop floor to communicate to the guys what we're planning to do and then get their input from a manufacturing point of view which directly influences the initial design stage. So that kind of harmony between the technology and the design with the craft is informing the product right from day one. Yeah. We'll do a lot of prototyping at Morgan. Sometimes it might be that we can ask Mike over there to, to hand shape um, one part of the car and show us what it's going to look like using the traditional techniques he has. So we're not reliant on you know, waiting for prototype parts from another country. We can use the craft and skills we've got here to knock something up. Um, but similarly, we might use the three, one of the 3D printers we have here to make a jig or a fixture that enables these guys to do their job a little bit quicker. So we're not going to be deploying 3D printed parts to a car to be produced, but we might use 3D printed processes to enable this craft to continue. So that, that sort of complement modern engine, traditional coach built body, modern platform, hand sewn, handcrafted interior, yeah. um, modern technology, craft techniques, the, the synergy of the two is what's really exciting about Morgan. Well it's really good to hear that, that, that you know that there is that synergy because you know we, we, we all love the convenience of, of technology whether it's being the end consumer or part of the manufacturing process uh, but, but part of the heart of uh, a brand like Morgan is, is knowing that you know for generations the, these skills and this craft is, is continuing and being, being passed down. Yeah, and this, that generational thing is really relevant. One of our sort of, um, one of our real care points is ensuring that we're embracing the education and the, and the, um, the teachings of these skills and crafts. So we, um, we get involved in many sponsorship programs, lots of work with educational faculty, faculties. At any one time, we could have up to 20 apprentices on the shop floors learning these crafts and these techniques because we do see them as, as being so important to, to not just our manufacturing, but you know, British manufacturing in general. Yes. Um, to keep some of these skills and crafts alive. So that's something we're really, really conscious of. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting. When we're working on the, on the modern CAD systems, I'll show you one of the famous parts of the, the wood shop and of the factory tour. There's a tool just down here, which is, is used to create the, um, the graphic of the rear arch. So this is a graphic that you see on the rear of any Morgan. And this, this graphic has been used for you know, 30 or 40 years now. And as a result, the, the former that is used to make that particular part of the wooden frame oh, look at is that. still in use today. Um, this is kind of the grandfather of the wood shop, if you like. It's and essentially what we're doing here is we're taking um, strips of ash wood and we're gluing those together and we're bending them into shape. This former will then hold that shape while the glue goes off and dries. At the other end of the wood shop, we do have some much more modern equivalents of this, bag presses that are doing it at a much greater speed, but this tool isn't broken and doesn't need to be fixed as it were. That's brilliant. What's, a gr what's brilliant for the, um, the guys in the engineering office is when this shape was made, it wasn't made using a CAD program. This was made you know, by high and by hand drawn profiles. And as a result, it's not a perfectly concentric circle. Right. So when our CAD teams are, are modeling an entire CX platform vehicle, um, numerically in a digital environment, they're having to draw in perfect circles and embed that into the CAD world. And that sort of, the nuances of craft and those sort of perfect imperfections that you get that actually add to the final product. Yes. Um, they're being baked in right at the start, even in the CAD world. So yeah. that's pretty good fun. And, and, it, and you know, it's such, a, it's such a lovely story, isn't it? As, as well, just being able to know that as you're driving your, your Morgan around, it's, you know, it's been formed on that on that piece there and that is such a signature isn't it i mean it's just it, it's it's lovely definitely it's um yeah it's very it's very rich in the senses in the wood shop especially of the smells the sounds the noise but the people too and at the moment obviously we we don't have people visiting the factory which is you know it's sad really it's, it's usually teams of tours of people coming through all day every day um we have a great 
factory tour experience you can come and do here, a new visitor center, and you know, ama amazing reviews and feedbacks, because you all get to come and witness this and see it firsthand. Yes. I think as a client, that's particularly special to, to see things like this and, and know that's what's gone into your car. Well, to be part Shake of the Shake hands process. with these guys, you know. Exactly, yeah. Shake hands with these guys that have been a part in putting it together for you. It's, um, it's incredibly p personal. Well, and, um, it, it's, it sounds like it's, it's, it's absolutely buzzing there. I mean, it, sound, you know, it sounds like you guys, you know, largely being able to sort of crack on, um, you know, certainly through, through this, um, what, what is our now third lockdown, but it's great to see that the, that the workshop floor is busy and production lines are, are, are full. Oh, definitely. It's, um, I mean, we, you know, it's certainly been a challenge, but the business is healthy. We've, um, we've managed to sort of navigate it and, um, you know, we're on track to, to do what we need to do at the moment. Um, it has given us some opportunities whilst we're missing the visitors and we're excited to see them back. Um, we've been able to really address the production facilities, um, look at our workflows and, and, you know, have a little bit of a spruce up and a tidy up if you like, yes. um, that we've been able to do due to not having that sort of stream of visitors. So there's been some benefit in that. Um, and we're really thankful we can keep doing what we do um, safely and obviously paying a big consideration towards doing all of that safely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, um, we're thankful that we've been able to sort of navigate what has been a pretty difficult time, but we're certainly now looking forward to seeing the end of this and um, welcoming back our customers and visitors. Yeah, well, there's, there, there's, no, there's no doubt that we'll all, uh, we'll all be, we'll, we'll be knocking on your doors soon to, to come and take a closer look. Um, but what people won't have seen, or wo won't, where they won't have been, um, is the design centre, which is where you're going to give us access to uh, this afternoon. So uh, I'm really eager to sort of get behind the scenes and sort of pull back the curtain and, and, and immerse ourselves in that. Definitely, that'd be good. Should we, um, should we go and have a look now? Yeah, let's do it. Right, great stuff, John. Um, this looks very interesting, what's behind you. So now we're in what you guys call um, NDEC. So this is your design facility up at Morgan. That's, that's right. This is Morgan's, the reception of Morgan's Design and Engineering Centre. Um, it's a brand new facility for Morgan. Um, yep. We moved in here probably just um, around about 12 months ago, um, just before the sort of lockdown and everything really, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is 25,000 square foot of dedicated R&D centre, basically. So in here, we cover off all parts of the, um, of the development process. So in my team, um, the guys are responsible for you know, the initial product strategy and conception, sketching, visualisation, clay modelling, um, initial modelling of surfacing and, and surfaces. Our entire engineering team are here then. Um, and we've got electronic specialists, high voltage EV specialists, wow. um, homologation, legislation, um, you know, chassis platform dynamics, steering, all the different various systems in the car. Um, and then all the CAD engineers, the computer aided design engineers that are doing all the modeling and the, um, the processing of that data. We then have a production readiness team that are getting our prototyping um, and all of those bits and pieces around us and keeping a, a track of the bill of materials and the kit of parts as it were. And then we have a huge dedicated workshop facility where we're able to build the first prototypes, um, evaluate the build sequences and basically get everything together that we need to hand across to the guys back at Pickersley Road. So yeah, um, so yeah and all kind of all encasing. Um, and it kind of runs full circle as it's always done at Morgan. Um, once the sort of product is nearing completion, um, the creative guys in my team, um, we're also very close to the actual the, the display of the brand too. So we get involved with the website, the promotional materials, the videos, the photography. So that's really nice. The guys that are responsible for communicating and, and telling these stories about these new products are kind of in the hub of where they're all sort of, you know, all the way they're all sort of born in the first place. So um, there's a real nice sort of A to Z loop that happens down here in MDEC. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're talk, talking full circle, what, what you've got uh, behind you sort of is a, is a nice segue into that because we've, we've, we've got some interesting vehicles lined up there which, which really sort of um, give you the full sense of, of uh, what MDEC's all around. So talk me through uh, a, a couple of those, particularly um, that one in the middle. That looks very exciting. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, yeah, it's all very sort of on topic at the moment. It's, um, it's, um, it's uh, not new news that Morgan has discontinued the outgoing three-wheeler mm. and uh, we've made the promise to the world that the three-wheeler will return. 
So in some form, it's within this build, <laughs> it's within this building where that activity is sort of being explored. Um, obviously, when we when we do pop our heads in, there's only a small amount of things that we can see. Everyone's kind of panicking a little bit about what's on the walls and what's on the screens and. We've got some full-size models and all sorts of exciting things on there, but um, yeah. we'll, we'll try and filter what we can see. But no, you're quite right. Really, really exciting vehicles here. These these three actually really demonstrate quite well the the different variations that the three-wheeler um, pillar has represented for Morgan over over the decades. Um, and uh, yeah, this car in the middle was one of our EV3s, and this was the Morgan's first fully electric um, vehicle. So this is one of the um, prototypes that we had running and driving and um, yeah, one's quite close to my heart. It's, um, it was a project that we were all hugely excited about. Unfortunately, just as we were about to enter sort of full scale production, um, one of the partners on the project was sort of unable to, to get us what we needed in regards to some of the technologies. Um, but nonetheless, this project was Morgan really cutting its teeth on not just how to make a, a battery turner motor, um, but how to do so safely. Yes. So we got a great deal of learning through this program in terms of, you know, what would it take to get our current commercial network up to speed, our dealerships all around the world. We export 70% of our product and how does your, your dealership in Portugal or China cope with an EV Morgan when it arrives and upskilling and, and sharing that knowledge was something that we had to think a lot about during this program. Um, but also internally, how do we handle EV technology safely? What sort of level of training do our operators need? Um, we now employ, as I mentioned, some, some uh, full-time EV specialists in our, in our team, which sort of does give a clear picture, I hope, of Morgan's you know, ambitions for EV going forward. So whilst we didn't get to see them running through the production line quite as soon as we'd have hoped, um, it was a very, very valuable project to Morgan and um, yeah, certainly good fun to work on. Absolutely. It gives you, it gives you a taste for it and, and, a, and a sort of a test bed to, to build from. So. Um, yeah, that, that being at sort of a prototype stage, did you get to the to sort of, um, you know, presumably testing range and, and you know, Morgan's about yeah. how it makes you feel. So, so what was what is that like to yeah, drive? Right. Yeah, that is right. I mean, it's, you know, we all, we all work at Morgan. We're surrounded by V8s and all sorts of highly mechanical, exciting vehicles. And, you know, I won't deny there was a bit of scepticism as to, you know, what an electric Morgan would be like. But um, yeah. throughout the programme, we all fell in love with it. Um, I mean, ultimately, EVs you sort of associate them with being very quiet, but this was still a, a hand-built, coach-built Morgan. You know, they had a very thin skins of aluminium sat directly over these quite noisy motors. It sounded like a really noisy scare electrics or like a pod racer out of Star Wars or something. It had this amazing whine to it that seemed to, you know, there's no gear changes. It was just a constant build-up in, in noise that accompanied the sort of continually surging torque and... You know, it was a very quick car. It was 0 to 60 in sort of six or seven seconds, which feels a great deal faster when you're, you're so exposed. Um, we were charging these in anything from 45 minutes through to four hours for a complete charge. Wow. Um, and that would get you 120 yeah. miles. You know, yeah. It was actually a very, a very sort of competitive product in terms of its economy, but, you know, that wasn't really the focus. The focus was to, you know, see what we could do in regards to electrifying a Morgan, still maintaining some of that driving excitement. But no, it screamed along. It was just bags of fun in terms of the power delivery and the torque and the sort of linear and non-stop power. You would definitely, you know, you'd definitely lift your foot off before it wanted to slow down. So, um, yeah, no, really, really super exciting. So, so we still have a face. So, you know, can, can we expect to, to see a battery electric uh, three-wheeler? You know, what does, what does the future hold? You, you, got to, you got to this stage, you know, where are you going to take us from there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, Morgan, we, we have the sort of, um, you know, we're, we're limited in production. We will, we will never build more than a thousand vehicles a year, you wouldn't imagine. Um, and as such, we don't quite have the economies of scales to be sort of leading these new technologies. But as we proved with things like the CX cars, we can employ current generation technology when it's well established um, into our vehicles. And it's no different for EV, really. The more and more mature it comes in the marketplace, the more and more accessible it comes to us. And um, we are, we're certainly getting ready for that and, um, and fully embrace it. All sorts of um, alternate propulsion and anything like that is, a, is definitely high on our agenda in terms of what we're exploring. Yeah, well, we, re we look forward to, uh, to, to sort of seeing the three-wheeler back out on the streets in whatever form it takes. Um, and then here in the main sort of atrium, this is sort of split into, the whole building is split into sort of three, 
in, into, into thirds. So we have a big workshop facility, we have a sort of storage and, and, and development area, and then we've got this sort of design area. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see the main studio. So behind here, all of our designers and engineers are still housed. Um, we like to all be in the same space. There's a lot of cross-pollination of what we do. Um, and it's great to be sort of constantly working hand in hand rather than a sort of very linear process. Um, so yeah, in absolutely. here, like I said, all parts of the process, starting with the sort of creative team through to sort of engineering CAD team and then the production and delivery team. Um, got some breakout rooms and offices and meeting spaces. And, and, the, and, the and car in our atrium, yes, yeah, sorry. And, and, and the, car, the cars to your left, John, uh, are, are they... Um, are they being used for, for development or what, what, what stage yeah. are those cars at? Well, I was, well, I was about to say there's, um, there's a few that our cameraman has been very conveniently just keeping out of shot. But on the whole, this is actually a sort of temporary residence of um, a portion of our heritage fleet. Hmm. So um, as many people will have seen, we've, we've just finished um, construction on our new visitor centre, which is a, a beautiful new building to host the sort of the tours that we have every year. Um, you know, historically we have sort of 30, 40,000 people visit the factory and um, we've created a better venue for them. And part of that new facility, which is sort of opening as a phase two, is a, is a new museum stroke experience room where you can, you can come and route through the archives of Morgan and see some of the heritage fleet. But until that part of the facility is finished, a lot of our cars are, <laughs> have landed down us here at MDEC. So whilst usually we'd have our full-size clay models and we'd have uh, some of our first prototype vehicles, and in fact, we do have some of those at the other end, um, yeah. up here is some really, really beautiful cars, which actually are a joy to have down here. Um, there's, some, there's some great things. I mean, just to, just to pick a few, we've got the last of the four-seater Morgans over there. That's the one we decided to keep um, on our fleet, which is a lovely car. We've got MMC 11, a very famous... Um, plus eight with a lot of pedigree and right next to that one of the last 50 plus eights so when we discontinued the n62 yeah. engined aluminium chassis cars um, we created a run of 50 very special plus eights which which sold very and, quickly and almost within the same hour they were announced but and, and, and it's you know and it is useful to have those cars around you because clearly you 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 do look you uh, look back for inspiration uh, as well as forwards because as we've seen uh, just recently with the with the launch of the GTR um, you know that's kind of taking those um, that you well I understand that there was eight rolling chassis which were available to you um, to produce this new GTR so clearly there's an opportunity to kind of look back and then uh, implement the new technology that you have um, from your facility there into some of the the old the older chassis that you have yeah, that's right. So, um, so special projects have always been, you know, a, a sort of a bit of a mainstay of what we've done over the last 10 years. In fact, the Aeromax that we saw earlier, that was, you know, a special project, 100 vehicles. Um, and we've done quite a few over the years. Um, I mean, just to, just to your, your right over there is the Aero GT, uh, one of eight vehicles we did to sort of mark the end of the N62 Aero bloodline. Yeah. Um, it's again, a very special project. So, because of everything you've seen today, the, our ability to be very flexible in manufacture with the wooden frame and what that gives us and the, and the craft and the skills we have here, um, we are able to sort of entertain projects like that. And um, what was just the, recently, um, sorry. And what was the, you know, what was the opportunity that you, that you and the design team saw there with, uh, with, the, with the Plus 8 GTR? What were you, um, what were you exploring there? Um, well, with the GTR, we had this amazing opportunity whereby previously Morgan had built and, um, and released eight rolling N62 platforms mm. to, um, to another partner. Um, and that partner was unable to do anything with those, and we saw the opportunity to get those back. So, um, so yeah, with us, it was, a, it was one last opportunity that we hadn't seen coming to sort of pay tribute to um, the, alum the original Aero aluminium platform yes. and all that's given us. Yep. Right back in, in sort of the late 90s and 2000, we, we were sort of, um, we had a, a wonderful car, which was the first to pioneer that sort of aluminium chassis development work. Um, and it sort of seemed fitting now that we've released the, um, the CX platform vehicles to sort of take a bit of a look back to that sort of era of, of the sort of the entrance of the BMW engine of the aluminium chassis and take some inspirations from there whilst trying to capture all the best bits of, you know, those cars, the sound of the V8, the drama, um, the noise, um, and within that sort of plus eight body style. I mean, I mean um, it's, it, so yeah. it's, a, it's a fabulous looking thing and, and clearly there, there is that element of it, of it being sort of 
a, a tribute to the, the race car uh, Big Blue, but, but also obviously a, a, an opportunity for you to um, test new technologies and, and um, you know, hopefully uh, some of the things that we'll, we'll see come through in, in the new car. So could it be that um, you know, what we see there from the GTR is going to be a continuation of some new and exciting releases in the future? Um, I think there's probably a, I think there's probably an element of that, but um, I mean ultimately all the guys down here we we love we love Morgans and we love doing exciting new things and I think one of the benefits of our team and Morgan in general is that we're able to be quite agile and reactive and and do what we believe is right you know for the time and and yeah. for our customers so I don't think we're too restrained I don't think we um you know we've we've not penned the GTR as part of some big sort of cyclic roadmap of reinvention. It's for us, it just represents what we'd like to see on an on a exciting V8 Morgan. Yeah. Um, and, you know, pick a load of best bits, pay tribute to a platform that meant a lot in our past. Yep. It, it doesn't really take away or shadow or interfere at all with what we're doing on the CX. You know, everything that's happening down here is all about embracing the future technologies and, and developing the next generation of Morgan cars. Um, and building upon those powertrains and platforms you already have. The GTR project is, you know, is us having some fun. Yeah. Um, and over the last few years, we've been, we've been preparing to, to do a few things like this. So I think whilst, um, you know, the GTR is what we're talking about now, there'll be a few more impending announcements quite soon that perhaps people didn't see coming. Um, awesome. And that's, what, and that's what Morgan's all about, you know. We're, we're developing cars and trying to stay competitive, trying to stay relevant, embracing new technology, pushing forward, ensuring that this company has a, has a strong future. But at the same time, you know, we're building cars because that's what we want to do. And, um, you know, there's a lot of passion in the, in the small teams we've got here. And uh, that's what makes it so magic, I think. Yes, definitely. You, you, you've certainly not lost that, ma uh, that magic of, of the company. You, you know, the relationship that you have, uh, you know, with, with your team in the, in the design center. And I see, you know, the conversations we've had you know just how close everybody is you know and you know the guys on the shop floor uh by name as well it's um it's a it's a lovely community and, you've built. and that really um and that really informs you know what, what you do working with the, the chaps in the engineering team the the things you learn about that you perhaps wouldn't in purely just a creative environment mm. you know it's it's great and it really broadens your knowledge and you're able to be quite lean and efficient in what you do you know you're able to draw things with a with a good chance they're going to be feasible and on budget um, and at the same time, the guys that are telling these stories are working alongside the guys that are coming up with them. And, um, you know, there's a real, there's a real honesty in what we do. Um, so, so it's just a very exciting place to work. <laughs> John, tell, tell me some of the, um, so tell me some of the exciting technologies that you've been working with, um, that people might not expect, uh, you know, a, a company like Morgan to be playing around with. Um, I don't know really. I mean, there's, there's lots of examples where Morgan have sort of downplayed a little bit what we're doing, perhaps. I mean, we talked a lot about Superform technology. Mm. Um, you can see in the in releases of you know brand new hypercars and supermarkets in the world that um, you know they're talking about their use of Superform. This is a technology Morgan have used for a long time because it just fits. Um, we have 3D printers dotted around. We don't make a big song and dance. They just mm. enable us to continue prototyping and creating craft. Um, as you'll see around the office here. You know, these are modern CAD machines doing everything from CAE analysis and, and durability testing and aerodynamic testing, um, designing all our electrical systems. Um, the modern technology is kind of, it's ingrained in everything we do and it has been for some time really. Um, you've seen cars like the EV3 project that were born from this same engineering team and design team right here. So, um, so yeah, I guess we just don't make a huge song and dance of it, but it's certainly a big part of what we do and we do embrace it. Um, I mean, going forward, we are really evaluating the ingredients in the Morgan in the Morgan part, and I think we've got more flexibility in design than people perhaps perhaps realise. You know, you think of Morgan, you do think of the classic 4.4, yes. um, but it doesn't take long rooting through the books to see the Aero GTs and the Plus 4 Pluses that we saw earlier, the EV3s. Um, we've actually got quite a flexible pot to pull from, and. Um, I think we're certainly going to start challenging perceptions a little bit with things that we're going to be showing over the next couple of years. There's some um, there's some projects on the uh, on the horizon that um, hopefully will create quite an impact. So yeah, well, well, can't wait to see those, and 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 more importantly, get out on the get out on the roads when things all open up. Well, you must come and see us down here too in um, to Malvern. I can't promise you a tour around M Deck, but we can certainly have a closer <laughs> look at the factory. Well, I, I really appreciate us, us having a, a sneak peek 
uh, sort of behind the scenes there and, and talking to you about some of these cars. And it's clear that there's uh, some really exciting stuff coming. So um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to show us what's, what's going on. So thanks, John. No, likewise, James. Thanks ever so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.